Uh, so he decides to pursue his dreams uh, as being an artist of uh, pursuing stand-up comedy for a sense of, of new normalcy and uh, takes his cannibal life uh, and his his look and his bloody apron and all his body parts and all that stuff and brings the cannibal life on the stage as kind of like a Gallagher carrot top esque prop comedy <laughs> shit. Takes it, on the, takes it on the road, so to speak. I like it. Yeah, Magic and uh, they're eating it up. Uh, in Yeah, mom. <laughs> so your mom, tell me a little bit about your mom. She uh is she down in Florida? Uh she is in Florida, yeah, yeah. That that's where you uh grew up, right? I did. Yeah, I reigned from there. Uh it's it's a it's a place. Uh it's it's definitely it's funny because I end up like cannibal comedian is like primarily all Florida peeps who uh are now all just like living in California and some have like traveled out for it, but it's majority California based Florida bred peeps, which is interesting. Uh, and it's, it's fun to go back and kind of like go back to like your roots and kind of hang out with the peeps that you grew up with and, uh, do like screenings so, out there and stuff like that. But, uh, Oh, so you, you didn't grow, grow up with the people that were on cannibal comedian though. No, uh, I actually didn't know any of those cats uh, when I was in Florida. It, we all, all, every single one of us all got together. A lot of those cats actually like came up in Hollywood, uh, Halloween Horror Nights, Hollywood, mm -hmm. had like all worked together there. It's funny, you like don't see, I'm just going to like keep like ADDing off into like different You're fine. thoughts, but uh, it is interesting how you don't hear a lot of stories, at least I don't, maybe you guys do, but like uh, about like character or just like really good, like people who are really good at scaring people in real life that are like, okay, I, I also really want to make horror movies or I already do that. And I just so happen to like also want to dabble in like uh, haunts and stuff like that. And like, just, you feel like there should be a filmmaker set of filmmakers now who like all grew up doing that like haunted house type stuff and now we're just like let's turn a camera on and let's make movies and like that's actually like a lot of this group that uh, did a uh, cannibal comedian so there's like there's that and there's you know obviously florida has like halloween horror nights ties as well which like you know i would i used to do that like every birthday I i've never been from 50 what you've never been no you i've heard, to... uh, either I, I've heard yeah. great oh things. my god it is it is something like it's and it's not just like your typical like haunted house like i feel like i i was just going out to city walk with a buddy of mine and i was just like um i feel like i haven't been to a theme park in maybe like four years i want to say but i'll still find a way to get to halloween horror nights every year like no matter what without fail and especially now when you go it's such a big like special marketing tool when it comes to like universal and blumhouse and like chucky and just like if you've got a hot property or something that's kind of coming back around or whatever you like trick-or-treat like when like 10 years later or something like when, when the trick-or-treat house was added to halloween horror nights and you get on those sets and like especially the trick-or-treat one was like straight up you're on the set of the movie like you're you That's have to cool. trick yourself into like like thinking that you're a real person at a haunted house because it really feels like you're on set and so you know a lot, a lot of like the production teams will like be involved with like the you know they want it to be super detail oriented and everything and um actually like one of my really uh like my best friends who edits like all of like a lot of the horror movies that i do work on his sister is like one of the heads of Universal Creative and she's out there like hand painting and designing like a lot of these houses in like uh, like Universal Orlando. And it's just it, it's a, it's incredible. I mean, like the lines and stuff like you might as well like spring for like a fast pass or a RIP yeah. tour or something like yeah. that. Because if you go out like you'd be waiting at the weekend house for two hours making friends in line. My and, sister, uh, my sister in law's uh, she got cerebral, cerebral palsy. So we get in, we get it first pass all the time. We put her in a wheelchair okay. and we go on. I love it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's just real talk. That's just real talk. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth. Giving, it's, just, it's the truth. It's just the truth. I love it. Yeah. No. no, are, no, you no talking, I, are you talking like Michael Doherty's like trick or treat? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. I think even Krampus, Krampus House I've yeah, done there as well. Sick. And there is a thing, like, if you really, like, not to, like, you know, uh, like, not to, like, nice. Not yeah. to, like, uh, a shit on the, uh, can I say S? Mm-hmm. Can I say S? Okay. Uh, this say is a Christian want, show. Dude. Yeah, okay, we're it's a very Christian religious. Show. Okay. Uh, in Jesus' name, not to shit on uh, <laughs> Universal uh, Hollywood, uh, the Hollywood one. But there is a different universal creative that runs either ones. And I think it's because the sound stages are so still in use at, uh, and don't quote me on this. This is just kind of like when you grow up, you kind of hear these stories. But like the universal Hollywood sound stages are still very much in use. So they build a lot of their haunted houses outside the sound stages. And they do these like black backdrops. Sometimes you can like see the sky, which kind of like breaks the illusion a little bit and there's like a lot of like popping out of the the darkness type things like when you go through like the the halloween michael myers type houses and stuff it's a lot of it's me again it's me again it's me again but like because the sound stages in orlando have been like tumbleweed city since like the 2000s like uh they are able to do all of the haunted houses in there and they put so much more like immersive money and creative control into the orlando experience versus the hollywood experience that i'm always like it because i've done it so much over there i've been like spoiled but i am always like appreciative of being able to go out and do it and so it's like and sometimes too even this last year like the monsters one with like the frankenstein dracula mummy uh combo they had uh the first half of it was at orlando i think or or hollywood and then the second half of the story you had to go to the other park to get. So like started out in like London and the things being shipped off. And the second part is at the other park on the other side of the country oh, wow. where like it, it lands in America and now all this stuff's going crazy in America. So like there's a little bit of like a Pokemon red and blue version of like, you gotta you gotta have both to like get yeah. the full story or whatever, oh, uh, which cool. is really sweet. Um, how, how much is it? Is it pretty expensive or is it? Um, is it like going to Disney, so to say, or is it cheaper? It's a, it's a little bit, uh, I'd say like off the top of my head, I feel like it's between. So like when I was in Florida, I just was always so used to being spoiled by like Florida resident discount. And it's mm-hmm. like, I feel like off the top of my head, like you go on like a Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's like a cheaper, it's like a 60 something dollar thing. Then you go on like the weekend, it's a Friday, Saturday, it's like 90 to like a hundred ish dollars or something like that. So, um, and then the fast pass is like a whole nother ticket price, like another hundred something dollars on it. So like if you're going out and you know, you're going to want to hit all the houses, you only have like one day to go out. You kind of want to spring for the fast pass. You're probably going to be paying like 200, 250 or something like that. So it is kind of, I'm assuming that's what like Disney prices are. I'm yeah. really, we're going done. to Disney in two weeks and I'm fucking dreading it, but, and no, Disney's a lot more fucking. Okay. Uh, yeah. But so where is this because my parents live in tampa or clearwater so tampa area that's and- literally where my parents are from that's crazy i don't think i ever knew that uh they're they're in uh like old i, I grew up in palm harbor that's where i was okay. like i was born in dunedin yeah uh, uh grew up in palm harbor then we're in dunedin parents- all the time dude it's a beautiful oh, nice. place you probably saw me baby uh small um and uh <laughs> then i was then i moved to oldsmar in like east like woodlands which is like the neighborhood of neighborhoods. It's very like a golf coursey. It's like a cross. It's if, if you know movies, you know it's across the street from the AMC Woodland Square Twenty. You know you that's go. pretty yeah. much all I needed. I know uh, where it's at exactly. Yeah. Uh. So. Uh. Yeah. That. But I always say like Clearwater, Tampa Bay for anybody yeah, who know. doesn't know. But uh. Yeah. My 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 mom and my stepdad are still out there. Uh. And like a lot of my family is kind of in that like Palm Harbor. So uh, I'm a, I'm assuming it's close to there because my dad's always like these weird people come down here and they say it's horror night and I'm like no it's not it's, it's that's a different horror kind of night. Uh, <laughs> um, what is it? Uh, you're saying from how close is it to there? You're talking about? Yeah, because he, I, they were down. I, I'm assuming they were in Tampa at the time doing something, and maybe is it is what it? Are we talking about? Are we talking about horror nights? Isn't that Orlando? Yeah. Horror Nights is in Orlando, and so I would maybe, say maybe they it's were about staying. an hour and a half from, yeah. like, the Tampa Bay area. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Tampa does have Hollow Scream, which uh, I I went to, I think, 
I can't remember the last time I've really gone to it, but I remember like the first time I went, I was like 13 years old and I was next to someone who apparently like spit on someone over the top of a railing of like the weight line thing. And they came out, they pulled our whole group of like 15 out because they thought I was spitting on people on my birthday. And I was like, no, what did, did you pull this out of line though? We just waited like two hours to get the thing because they oh, messed up. They had to give us like uh, fast pass comps for our whole group. So it was a, it was a blessing in disguise. Uh, yeah. So just, you know, spit on people. And then yeah, that sounds, that sounds very Florida. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just down in, uh, I was just down in uh, Indian rocks beach. Okay. Uh, so like Clearwater, uh, St. Petersburg area yeah. on vacation. Pretty awesome down there, man. Holy shit. Like the canal and all, I was on the canal and shit like that. And it was, uh, it was a good time. I, I don't go down South very often. I'm from Maine. So okay. I'm tip of the iceberg up here in, yeah. in America, but, uh, a little colder, a couple yeah, degrees, a little bit, of, a little bit colder. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it hits, you know, 81 around here, I'm, I'm pretty much dying, you know? Yeah. So. Shit. A little bit different down there. Yeah. So uh, oddly enough, I was just uh, before I jumped on here, there happened to be a Spring Breakers reference about in this uh, apartment, and uh, I uh, that's like where they like shot Spring Breakers. It was like really? St. Pete. Uh, yeah, St. Pete Clearwater. Because like if you if you listen to a lot of the James Franco's uh, Alien rants, it's a lot about Seven Two Seven Wick City, yeah. like uh saint pete we're out here in the saint pete's you know uh, yeah i didn't know that and that's like i well i guess it makes sense to film down there because it's kind of like the arts the artsy part of of florida right i mean i feel like yes. saint, Peter, saint petersburg it be- is it has become that like yeah. um uh the tony armor i believe is his name used to be this uh saint pete film commissioner um i believe he's like kind of like moved up into different aspects of film stuff i've heard because my uh, sound mixer uh, with uh, Sean Heights through Cannibal Comedian, uh, Roger Hughes is his name. He, uh, he's real tapped in with um, down there. I believe Tyler is the name of the new uh, film commissioner down there. But like St. Pete is like big arts, big film, yeah. film festivals. Like um, uh, Kevin Smith shot uh, the Kilroy Was Here anthology down in like oh, the wow. St. Pete kind of Sarasota area, I believe. But definitely with St. Pete Film Commission with the, the Ringling College group of uh, film like film kids down there so uh mm. it's definitely like picked up some stuff over the over the past years since like i was out there like when i was kind of like moving out here i was it was kind of becoming a lot a lot bigger and but it's definitely like a lot more it's, it's happening like every time i come back like and i go and visit like my family and stuff like that i usually will like hit up downtown saint pete with like my mom and go like bar hopping with my mom which is like never cool like a thing i did growing up and now it's just like let's hit up this let's hit up that let's hit up. i'm just like all right let's let's calm it down let's let's <laughs> try to tear it up like i'm just like trying to be like the responsible like in bed by 10 p.m uh, yeah but, yeah it's like yeah. it's it's like not like a big city style down there it's like uh you know, I, when we went to St. Pete, it was like they had that new boardwalk or whatever, mm-hmm. and we went we went on the, at the end of that and stuff like that. I didn't really party in St. Pete, but um, it was pretty cool, man. I I didn't yeah. mind it. Um, it was it was pretty laid back, not like going to fucking Miami or some shit like that. Sure, you know, which I'm fucking definitely hate Miami. I'm definitely too old for that. So like, <laughs> when you when you like grow up in that area, you know what I mean, like the Pinellas County area, like especially in comparison now, like St. Pete is happening. You know, it's right. not like a level of like Tampa or like Ybor City or to like downtown Orlando or whatever. But like there are some cool spots down there. Like it's definitely like fun to like go out to dinner or like go to hit rooftop bars. It's got kind of like a classy like going out type of fair deal. There's also a cool spot called No Vacancy, which there's a No Vacancy out in Hollywood, which is like my favorite speakeasy bar on the planet Earth. But there's nice. one in uh, St. Pete as well that uh is like it's got like a florida um motel vibe of like the the hangout outside area is kind of like this is like grassy outdoor motel pool hangout area it's not a pool but it's like what you get when you feel like you're driving past like a a florida motel and it's like but it's a bar themed for that that's cool no vacancy and it's it's really wild because they have like this 
vase or something like a some sort of like a centerpiece like a, a little swan centerpiece that's just filled with ice and i'm guessing some type of uh liquor or alcohol wine i think like it's just like actually no it's a bunch of ice it's like a upside down like rosé bottle or wine bottle with like 10 different straws out uh it's just like a, in this like a duck swan uh, centerpiece deal and everybody no, just drinks out no. of this bowl that doesn't that doesn't sound COVID. safe yeah that doesn't yeah. sound sanitary at all but like, it's you know florida like without, what do you expect yeah even without covid i wouldn't yeah. do that like, i definitely just... didn't partake but i'd watch from afar like that is a <laughs> conversation uh, that looks that's... like that looks like a trucker stop you know like i don't know yeah yeah it looks but like from the florida. photos it has like like the typical flamingo Hot pig flamingo yep. painted on the wall and shit. And yep. the, the astroturf and yeah, that's yep. cool. It has yeah. that super motel vibe. Holy shit. Yeah. That's yeah. hilarious. No, it's, no vacancy? No vacancy, yeah. How far is that away from uh Clearwater Tampa area? That's St. Petersburg. So yeah, it's Saint like Pete. two towns of the town over or some shit, right? I mean you go across yeah, the bridge and you I feel like right you can kind of get everywhere within that area yeah. in like 30 minutes. No we, problem. Like we are. Uh, I know. I know where now. we we stayed. It was like we were basically, you know, Indian Rocks, clear water, and then you go over the bridge, and you're in St. Petersburg, basically. So it was like a 25 minute drive or something. But right where right. I was I, was very like vacationy. Like like it was weird. It was like I'm from Maine, and then I went there, and it was like you saw Maine plates everywhere, and like you know, Patriot symbols everywhere. I was like, this is where everybody goes to retire, basically. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, you get a lot of the snowbirds. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's always yeah. the thing. But now, I mean, post-pandemic, it's like everyone from everywhere is there. It's just like melting yeah. pot. Like, it's become like this, like, you know, like Austin very much, like, is it's right. everybody from everywhere is kind of like moved down there. The real estate's like gone up like crazy. Oh yeah. yeah. Austin, Austin's blowing up too, huh? Like, yeah. Crazy. I mean, it, like, what is it? Uh, uh, Elon went down there and yeah, he's start, Elon's Joe starting Rogan. a fucking community down there or something. Yeah. Like that. Did you yeah. hear about that? I, you know, what's funny. I, I kind of heard about that. I, I actually, I, I did, but then I, I mostly think about it because of the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie where it's like, I thought it was such a great idea to be like thinking one step ahead of like, okay, so Austin's booming. What happens after Austin? That right. It's not, not burst, but it's booming too much that you'd have to go into a bit more of the outskirts of Texas, but you run into the place where like <laughs> Weatherface has been hiding out for it's decades. Like yeah, people haven't yeah. been there for a reason. Like, and they have that like Tesla joke of like the auto auto drive deal that that plays into the the final shots of the movie. And right, I I, I think that that stuff is great. I mostly like really just appreciate. And the movie was shot in like Romania or somewhere. Right. Like, it's not even shot in Texas. Was it really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. That whole little town setup deal is uh is is shot in like Europe somewhere. Wow, people, sh people shit Why? on that. People shit on that movie, dude. But like, there's some dude, great scenes in that movie. That movie's dude. fucking amazing. People amazing. shit on that movie who did not sit through like the other like eight Texas Chainsaw oh, yeah, movies. Right, right, right. I will watch all of those movies, but like by the time we got to that one and the party bus stuff, and I was just like, this is like a breath of fresh air. Like this is. Yeah. This is done well. This is done competently. I, like I rewatched it literally uh not last night but the night before and it I was, was good. I was like, fuck, this it's, is there's brutal. not there's not, there's like, not much of so like good. a yeah, there's not much of a story there, but it's like everybody it's so was good. like everybody's like, Oh, I hate the characters. And it's like, well, that's kind of the point, right? Like Yeah. You know what I mean? Um what would you uh call like startup? uh hipster right uh, yeah millennial like it's it's all you know of course they're they're not really supposed to be set up as likable characters even the characters in texas who don't really like them coming in like to take yeah. over also not very likable it's like mm -hmm. you turned into this movie to watch leatherface like that's yeah. what's so genius about the scream movies now i was just driving on uh like hollywood highland area and there's this great new paramount plus billboard and on there, it's got like it's it's got like the place for movies. Pretty much, they're really trying to show you their main properties. And one of their main things is Ghostface. And Ghostface, just from like the new movie, 
That's up on cool. the billboard as like one of like the main towering figures of why you need to subscribe to Paramount Plus. And and what I think that the radio silence guys, I'm just like driving my car thinking about all like the marketing and the the foundations of how Scream 5 came about. But it's like when you have to realize that like people aren't, they, they still do tune in for like Nev and Courtney and like, uh, you know, Arquette and everything. And it's just like, but really at the end of the day now, if you make, ghost face the icon because think of like i was like it's a lot of weird driving thoughts but like scream one scream two scream three i tell you the art you picture the artwork nowhere does ghost face really show up right right it's you're always the faces yeah. and you're thinking the eyeballs but like yeah. when you get an even scream four it's like ghost faces face through a blade but then it's not until scream five where it's like all of these things tower now to ghost face being the face of the franchise, the thing you want to root for. And then you get into the New York number six. And it's like, again, he's the top figure. You have all these other things around. It's like Thanos type deal of like, you know, this Marvel pyramid of just like, once you figure out that the thing that's endlessly marketable is the ghost face, like fun land mask, like, or fun world, fun, fun world. world. Yeah. Fun world uh, yeah. Like, you you realize that that's what people are buying into, and I was thinking about all of that as I just like poked at the the, the Paramount billboard and saw Ghostface on there, and it's like it's not Nev Campbell up there, you know what I mean? It's, it's but how like, cool is that to see that though? Like, because I'm in Tennessee, he's in Maine, we don't have billboards of Ghostface around. Like, no, <laughs> that's that's cool as fuck just to see on its own, you know? Yeah, I would say that when I first came out here, uh, it was like in 2000 and. I want to say it's either nine or 10 and uh, Kevin Smith had flown us out here to play hockey at uh, the LA Kings practice arena. He rented wow. out so that we could all just shoot the shit and hang out for a birthday weekend and play hockey and watch him to the Orpheum and all this stuff. And when I was there, I, we, he put us up in uh, uh, the, uh, the best Western on Highland and uh and I remember there was like a subway across the street that was open 24 hours. I was like, what magical land am I in? <laughs> and, and I was walking down and it's, you know, it's every corner has like, it's all that like painted artwork up on the, the fence wall. Like all those uh, post no bills you see, it's all the bills, all the yeah. bills are up. And uh, it was all the saw six marketing of like the head oh, and the uh, trap and the trap is shaped like a, a vi and like i remember thinking like whoa where am i like this is the coolest place ever and like coming in and like flying in and driving through like lax past lax and seeing all like the mountains coming from like florida where like everything is flat like you just look outside and you're like this is it i can't see past that house and i never will uh <laughs> like that's that's what's so cool is like oh this is a view and they didn't you know outlaw the breeze out here uh, which is a, a plus, but like yeah. when I, when I would be driving around going and a buddy of mine, were just driving around and he's like, Whoa, well, that's coming out. And this is coming out. And blah, blah. I was like, that's, what's great about like living in LA, living in Hollywood is like, I, I know what's going on just because the billboards are so targeted to it. Like almost every billboard yeah. right now on almost every street is a four year consideration Emmy nominated show. Um, or there's like at the Chinese theater, there's just like last call with Saul. And I was like, what special episode? What, what am I missing from better call Saul? And it's their Emmy push their, for your consideration push. And I'm like, oh, it's your last chance to be able to vote for the show, knowing it's their final seasons and stuff. And, you know, you, you go to the Goodwill and there's like all of these four year consideration screeners. So like, especially if you're wow. like a big, like physical media nerd like me, like there's so many shows and movies that just go straight to digital or Netflix originals, but because they're nominated for Emmys, Oscars, whatever, they do create physical media for these things and they mail them out to Academy members and SAG members and all that so they can vote. And then after that, people drop them off at the Goodwill and donate them and you can go and pick them up for like a dollar 99 so you go like any goodwill Whoa. out in, in hollywood or you know just la area and just go to their dvd section and there's all of these like really elaborately done like if you just go onto ebay right now and you type in for your consideration dvd blu-ray whatever you'll find movies that are netflix originals that have never been released on physical media and like they're they're all up on there that people just go like i don't know i just receive you know 40 of these a year and they just chuck them up there for like 
two ninety nine, three ninety nine, whatever. And you can get like really cool physical media collector stuff, even like stand up specials. Like it's tough to like find like stand up Blu Ray DVD sets. Everything's Netflix. Everything's streaming, streaming, streaming. But like if you ever want, like back in the day, you own like like Martin Lawrence, like you so crazy, run tell that, like like uh, uh, like oh, like Eddie Griffin dysfunctional family, like that, like those like pieces of like physical media I used to watch all the time as a kid. So it's like. You can grab all that stuff just like going straight to goodwill or whatever and it's just there's just something like a little different about Man. living out here just like coming out here and visiting be like okay now i gotta go back home like i just left a piece of my heart out here and just slowly just kept like depositing little heart deposits every time for about 10 years before i actually moved out here right before do you like it do you like it now i do i do love it out here yeah i do i do i'd let them bury me or do whatever to my the bones out here uh if i, <laughs> See? If I can't it seems like it seems like you know Hollywood is kind of you know California in in general is being very hard to get along with when it comes to certain things you know like you said they didn't outlaw the wind you know the breeze like it seems like everything's so hard like Rogan and everybody's moving you know yeah, yeah. well I some... mean like they didn't outlaw it as in like there's no such thing as like a breeze in Florida except for like two days out of the year. Like there's one day in October where they declare that fall is allowed for the day and you like smell that like fall smell that like makes you want to like go home and watch like Nightmare Before Christmas or something like that. Like that's what's great. And then out here, there's a theater, you know, the El Capitan Theater that Disney owns. They play uh, Nightmare Before Christmas in 3D every single year and then they have like a 4d element to it where when it when it becomes oh, yeah. uh halloween town all of the lights the spooky lights come on in the theater and then when you go to christmas town it starts snowing in the theater like wow they, they play like the rocky horror picture so at like one of like the uh uh what is it like the arrow theater or something like that out here uh, i can't remember which one but like i drive past all the time and i'm like they're still playing that like every saturday like it's just you know like the room plays out here in a theater like every weekend still. Dude, that's it's like... so that's so weird for someone like me where like you're living in a place where like like it's I actually I actually get that, and then you get like but we don't get any of the show business aspect of it mm -hmm. where you think it would be that way right like where you would play like Maine and New England should play on that spooky. Right. feel you know what i yeah. mean where like and then you're getting the whole the whole like yeah we're gonna make it like that because it's kind of not like that out here so we're gonna make right. it, we're gonna we're gonna lean into that and you would think new england would kind of do that but we really don't but we do get the whole aspect of it like we get the fall feeling yeah. you know what i mean yeah. like you don't have to you know what i mean it's just there and then the winter aspect and all that kind of stuff. And then sure. you're, you're, you're seeing something where it's like, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to actually lean into that and make it like that out here. And it's such a, it's such a weird thing. I don't know. It's, 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 you would think where I'm from, where like, you know, Stephen King and like this, the, the whole spooky aspect of, of new England, but there really is no like show business or, or yeah leaning into the arts aspect of it but then where you are it's like we're going to lean into that every seat whatever season it is every gonna, day of the that. year is yeah. there's a, something to celebrate because because it's the entertainment capital of the world like one of the right. one of the reasons why like i moved out here was just because the new beverly quentin tarantino's theater out here shows cult double features like every night of the week and it's all on 16 or 35 no digital and like you could just go out like I would just watch I would just follow the New Beverly on Instagram and they just post photos of their marquee just any random day of the night. And it's just like, oh, they're showing Star Trek Two Wrath of Khan and the Search for Spock double feature 35 millimeter tonight. Like and I that's in cool. Florida. And like I could just be watching my favorite movie of all time, Wrath of Khan, on just a random Tuesday night. And right. reminding myself as to why I wanted to make movies in the first place kind of thing. And the fact that you can just have that happen. And you never know, like Tarantino will show up, like he'll just do surprise. Like he's showing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood every Friday night at midnight this month to uh, in memoriam of uh, Rick Dalton's passing. And like you wow. never know who could show up between like Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie, like when oh Pinocchio God. was showing here, Guillermo del Toro showed up with the with the with the Pinocchio puppets. 
Whoa. like and just brought them out on stage and you're just like you didn't expect for like that to be a, a part of your night you know we're going out to see um one of the most recent ones i did was uh the black christmas silent night deadly night double feature and uh you know uh like the cat who plays uh what is it uh it's not is billy is the first one or the second one Billy's uh, the second, the, right? The second one. So who's the who's the Santa Claus in the first one? It just well, are we talking about Silent Night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. He he might be. It might be Billy. I yeah. think it's the I think it's the first one. Yeah, Billy's the first one. Who's the yeah. second one? He's the garbage man. Yeah, it's the garbage man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Billy's uh, the first yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So, sure. uh, yeah, Billy is the billy uh billy chapman is the yeah. first one Ro- uh, robert brian wilson was out yes yes and like introduced the movie and then it's just like in the lobby just chilling like taking photos with everybody and it's like oh the dude who was on the screen murdering everybody is now next to the popcorn and chilling to that's cool with everybody it's like you know that can happen pretty much any day of the week you know so like why you- wouldn't you go out right yeah. Any right and that, but that you know it's like you gotta work too you could go out every single line of the week if right. you want but uh you know it's like gotta be well, strategic about well i'm it. sure that's the vice of it right like people yeah. who are out there and just not really working in the entertainment business but are out there for the entertainment yeah it, uh that's a vice in its own man like I, sure. if i were out there holy shit bro it'd yeah. be a problem I wouldn't get it. Thing, when you come too much out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. When you come out as well, like you gotta, it's tough to plan for just a weekend. Like you really, you almost have to do something like every three hours. Cause like, obviously like I visited for about 10 years and especially we come out a lot for Kevin Smith related stuff or like the guy, like the shooting clerks gang, we'd come out, we do like wonder con San Diego comic con. So we do get the guys together for hockey, do whatever. And it's like, you come out and they're, it's like it, it, a weekend feels like a month out here you know yeah. but you really got to come out for like a week to try and be able to plan and do everything because again you have like disney out here you have universal out here you can go to the universal city walk with like the full perf imax and watch things like on the screens that they were built to be seen on and it's like you know you could do that every day you go to every little special this that and the other the, the little pop-ups like you know there's always something kind of going on that like it, it it really does feel like a, I don't know, it's just like, if you like entertainment, you get to see it kind of come to life. I mean, literally you go on Hollywood Boulevard on the Walk of Fame and you're gonna meet like shit stained Spider-Man and crackhead Batman, you know, and get photos with them. It's like, it is like <laughs> entertainment, like come to life. My buddy who's here just went and did like the, you know, um, the Warner Brothers studio tour and then the next day did like the Paramount studio tour and it's like that's cool you know you can go out and do two hour tour you can do a six hour tour like he sent me photos of just like all like the DCEU stuff like I've never seen before and I'm just like oh cool like there's the Batwing like you know it's just it's just like yeah. whoa and especially if you like have a little bit of like something you want to tap into that you're like I kind of want to pursue something in entertainment or acting or filmmaking or whatever I don't know what it is like you can kind of come out here and like if you just figure out what it is to do in, in advance and kind of plan out your trip strategically you can kind of unlock whatever it is that's probably going to help you i mean i um i i just uh when i first came out here i went to uh, mel's uh mel i i, I uh i <laughs> it's like kind of like an elevated story but it's like uh i went to festival supreme which was uh, tenacious d and like a kind of adult swim tim and eric and and all those cats did like a music comedy festival and like Conan O'Brien got involved with it and Adam Sandler and like uh, Brendan Small and the death clock. And, you know, it became this like amazing, like we get thing. I don't really think they do it anymore. Um, but I came out here just for that it was on my birthday. And like the next day I was like, okay, so uh, that movie uh, escape from tomorrow, I think it's called is uh, that black and white movie that was uh, secretly shot in Disney uh on like a 5d canon 5d you know dslr like looks like a photography camera when you can shoot like 1080 you know right. uh video on it snuck into disney and shot this like experimental horror uh you know trippy movie and it was showing at the sundance theater which then got bought by mc now landmark just took over and built this like whole asteroid city pop-up theater so like if you want to see wes anderson's new uh asteroid city movie but you want to go to a theater where the entire theater is transformed into like the world of his movie the landmark cinema on sunset is doing that now so it's like i want to go there and watch that movie that like disney still hasn't sued them over because they don't want to give them any more attention 
and went to uh, Mel's uh, Mel's Drive-In Diner and went there, ate breakfast. And like, as I was like on my way out, popping out, uh, uh, I saw a Rip Taylor, uh, oh. famous comedian. Yeah, if you've ever yeah, seen yeah, like the Jackass, the Jackass movies, yeah. he's the dude who comes out the confetti. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and he's like outside. I'm like, oh my gosh, like Rip Taylor, like comic legend. Like, so I'm just, wow, hello, this is so cool. Uh, like, do you mind if I get like a photo with you, or whatever? And he's like, yeah, that sounds good. Why don't you come in and have breakfast for with me first? And I was just Whoa. like, all, all right, like, sure. I mean, I just like ate, but the, like this dude just wants to hang out. Like, okay. And we just sat <laughs> down and just proceeded for the next like two hours, just talk about life and just like Ooh. talk about his career and talk about like just at the time I was like just graduating from like UCF film school and he wanted to know about like the films I was making and why I wanted to make them and what I was out there to do. And uh, we're just having like this great conversation. He was telling me, he's like, I just finished three shorts for funnier die. And the funnier die office is right here on this street, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, and he's like, you should go over there and knock on the door and ask for a job. You should just go do it right now. And I was like, rip i got like i have like two hours i gotta jump on a bus and right. like, I like i'm, a, I'm already i'm already eating second breakfast bro yeah yeah <laughs> i was like I, I gotta go like i'm gonna miss my flight to lax if i don't do exactly everything that i needed to and i just barely made it onto that flight but there was something about the aspect of this dude being like you just need to go to the thing and you need to tell them i told you to show up and knock on the door and be like give me a job and, you know, th like, there's something, like, just old school about that. There was, like, that's never going to fly, like, Rick, come on. <laughs> but then, like, there's an aspect of it where, like, I'll meet kids today who want to work on indies that I'm doing who literally just by showing up and saying, like, what can I do? Where where can I – where where do you need a hand or whatever? Ah, uh, just – yeah, can you just do this and blah, blah. You did that really well. Like, uh, can you do this? Uh, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Like, blah, blah, blah. You want to do that? Just put you here. Blah, blah. Do you want to be in the film? Do you want to get killed by the guy? We got to get somebody to do that. Yeah, just drop the just shot. You, you can do lines, right? You can't do lines. That's fine. You got like a couple words. You just say the thing. And next thing you know, like a, a, a guy who showed up just a PA or whatever gets murdered by the slasher in the film just based off of being at the right place at the right time and just right. saying like, how can I help? And there's something about me that just like wonders, like, I wonder if I just like quit kind of a lot of the stuff that the path that I went down through, like theatrical exhibition and studio marketing, but while becoming like an independent producer actor to like go and just do that and see what that would take uh, or like what would happen. And probably, yeah, it could have slammed the door in my face. But there's right. also a possibility that like maybe they needed help that day with something and like you know, just right place, right time. I mean, I mean, she like, I, I probably wouldn't be, you know, doing a lot of the stuff I'm doing now with like shooting clerks and chasing, chasing Amy and whatnot, if it wasn't for like, just b being on Facebook, bumming around my movie theater job at the right time. And just was snuck into the break room and answered an ad and sent off like, you know, two shorts I'd worked on. and was just like, I can help put together whatever it is you need for this thing. And they're like, yeah, we need somebody to like direct all the cameos for our like initial shoots of all the like the clerks people. And it's just like, oh my gosh, like what I what did I do? I kind of slacked at my day job there for, you know, the, the next hour or so to go apply for that thing. But if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have had all these opportunities that led to all these other like producing gigs or acting gigs I've had. So that's crazy. Can we, can we back up and tell... Tell us how you know Kevin Smith. Like, yeah, it seems like you've been working with him kind of for a while, right? Shit. Yeah, it's been it's been a, I, I met Kevin in uh, 2006 at the Sundance Film Festival, um, which uh, was for uh, they had a Malcolm Ingram had a documentary there called Small Town Gay Bar, which uh, Kevin Smith had executive produced. And uh, at the time, I kind of went out to uh, Sundance because uh, I, I went to Countryside High School in Clearwater, Florida where they have like a TV production, um, uh, like specialty program there. And like, I sh you know, you like shadow like college, colleges and stuff like that. I shadowed my high school because I wanted to find out about this TV film program they had. And uh, there's a teacher named Carl Zimmerman there who ended up oddly enough, like running for House of Representatives and won. Uh, so just random. Uh, he, uh, he, 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 he had this like award-winning like TV film program and every year they do a field trip where you get to go to Sundance Film Festival for like a week and you can watch like 
20, 30 movies or whatever all day and night, starting from 8 a.m. until midnight and just like, you know, meet celebrities and network and, and party and just build, you know, contacts at like 15, 16 years old. And my second year going, I found out Kevin Smith had a movie there and I didn't know if he was going to be there. But I was like, I'm going to chance this. And I went out like, you know, 8 a.m., waiting out in the cold for like several hours to, to the premiere of this movie got in. And then a buddy of mine came out and was like, Kevin Smith is outside smoking a cigarette right now. Back when he used to smoke cigarettes, this was back in the bowling, bowling Jersey era, Kev, yeah, like a uh, before, right before Clerks two. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Uh, he uh yeah he brought we went out met kevin if you've ever met kevin you know he's like the sweetest dude on the planet and he has time for like anybody who comes up to him it's it's definitely like it's okay to meet your heroes type of dude yeah like we uh it was great he went up and did this like incredible intro for the thing and then after like hung out and shot the shit with everybody and um i think like uh clerks 2 had come out and i was kind of finishing doing all my tv production stuff in high school and then um i ended up joining the view askew message board uh which was kind of it was a pre-twitter type hangout where kevin would just kind of shoot the shit with all his like fans and kind of it turned into like this like this subsection of like if you're kevin it's like pretty much it's pre-reddit obviously too like i'm sure there's like a kevin smith subreddit type deal and uh like that's pretty much what that was and pre-twitter where kevin could interact with your posts and stuff like that like ben affleck was on there too he had like a secret like name he would go on and just like kind of like they was like inside jokes and clerks three back to dating back to like the message board people and all that stuff but you'd find that there was like such a great community of just general human beings that were on there not just to talk about kevin smith but all had that common interest and around the time that like zach and mary make a porno came out uh they were doing a thing called the the uh, uh view askew street hockey league which was taking place at the Walter Gretzky street hockey tournament in Brantford, Ontario, Canada. Uh, so he was like, I want to, I want to put together these teams for this charity tournament. And all the teams were from his, his films. So like there was the Monroeville zombies from Zach and Mary make a porno. There was uh, the Leonardo Reapers from clerks Two. There was the Vulgarians from mall rats, like all those jerseys you kind of see in there and uh and he was like i have all these jerseys let's slap some names on there let's, let's let's get some folks together who probably haven't played hockey in like you know 20 years and they're like 30s and 40s and let's play hockey for charity and kevin's like i'm gonna put my own team together called puck you and it's of all his like view askew friends like from the comic book men jason muse and malcolm and jen his wife and they all played hockey katie morgan from zach and mary uh like you had all these cats who like we're all in this, like, you know, this, we had our own little hockey league and I wasn't able to join because I just found out about it after they fully staffed up teams. And because most of the guys that wanted to jump on and play hockey were kind of like out of shape, one dude like immediately while practicing, like messed, messed himself up and they had an open spot on the Monroeville Zombies. And I at the time was 19 years old and I had just finished, you know, kind of wrapping up playing hockey for like 10 years. So I was kind of like one of the most like able-bodied and like trained people to have on a team. And so they picked me up on that team. And then by the end, when we started playing championship stuff, uh, Kevin kind of poached me as a forward for his team, Puck U. And then for the next year and a half, we would do travel and do pickup games. And Ming Chen from Comic Book Men used to run the whole thing and set up all the hotels and the, the diner hangouts and the the convention stuff and the 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 live shows and kind of just be like the ringleader of all of us like misfits and we did that for a year and a half between new jersey la and canada and then you know we just like you know all hang out we'd play poker together we'd go out to shows together we'd shoot the shit but that was never really like a filmmaking type of thing which obviously arguably if it wasn't for kevin smith i probably wouldn't be doing a lot of like the indie film type film school esc escapades onward you know so uh and that was too cool too because when we met at sundance like right after i met him I, I think at the time you know i'd seen like dogma on comedy central and jay and silent bob strike back used to be like this like the vhs tape my buddy let me borrow used to be like a uh, like a pretty much a brick of crack cocaine in right, my right. household with with my parents you know if they found that out <laughs> they'd they'd, they'd yeah. see like drugs it were just it needles everywhere. They'd be like, that's okay, but this here, I don't know about this. You're going to hell. 
So, uh, <laughs> you know, not that I had any needles, but uh, it was that bad. And uh, disclaimer, mom. Um, she's like, what'd you say about the needles? Uh, but uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I had this and I, I love that. And I, you know, I'd, I'd seen like, you know, mall rats and stuff like that. But like I, I at, at Sundance that year after I met him and he was just the coolest dude ever. I went out and proceeded. There was a blockbuster video at Park City, Utah. And I just went and I spent like a bunch of my food money on just like Clerks X, you know, like mall rats chasing Amy, just like got the whole, everything that was for sale there and just watched all the commentary tracks and behind the scenes stuff. And along with uh, Adam Marcus's uh, Jason Goes to Hell commentary, which was the first one I ever saw. And uh, now I'm working on a documentary uh, with Adam Marcus uh, called uh, Hearts of Darkness, The Making of the Final Friday. Uh, I, I picked up the Clerks 2 and, uh, you know, all of the commentary tracks. Those were all my film school before film school, you know, and you get to just if you've never heard a commentary track or for anything like that, dig up your favorite movie that, you know, you love and just pop that on and your, your brain will explode with all like the especially for like Jason Goes to Hell was so fun because it's like it was so much of them being like. We were just out of film school in our 20s. They handed us to the reins to yeah. this, you know, franchise. And <laughs> the we best did stories, not dude. know what we were doing. But that's okay. Like, that's what Definitely. you should be allowed to kind of have those opportunities to go out and do that. And for anybody, you know, who wants to go out and say, they should have never made that movie. It's my least favorite one. It's like, well, it's one of my most favorite ones because right. it's it's the it's the one that gets to kind of have fun and do something different and say fuck it and throw caution to the wind and lore to the wind and also dip in more to the lore and ask the questions that nobody asks and do the unsafe things that make it a standout entry in the series but uh yeah i mean after after that uh you know uh, christopher downey ended up working on these uh uh kevin smith uh, like um, uh, fan films turn biopic shorts once Kevin started to get involved. Um, Emo Kev uh, and uh, Gick Greedo, some of those like uh, older shorts that they did are I think still like available on YouTube. And there's like a, a biopic shorts uh, physical media collection that they put out uh, when we were doing like the first test screening tour stuff. Um, and they're a Scottish based company um, and they needed somebody to kind of run the the us based stuff and by this time i'd already had so many years of just contact and experience with a lot of the kevin smith cats you know that they wish that you know they had like by like four, maybe four people from the original i want to say like uh you know ernie o'donnell marilyn gigliotti scott chiaffo um those were definitely like a lot of the like og cats that kind of jumped in obviously kevin too was the very first person that jumped on for shooting clerks and uh and then by that point they wanted to get all these other cats who didn't know of them, you know, and I was like, well, I could just call up these people. I play hockey with them all the time and we could see if we can make this work and get my friends from UCF film school together, go out to Jersey and shoot that initial unit that we ended up doing. And that brought up, I think we had like 11 cameos we stretched at the time. Now the one that we're getting ready to premiere in two months has 32 cameos from the original USQ clerks, wow. Jane Solid Bob. Uh, Cause again, like through reboot, and through Clerks 3, you know, right. like going out uh, to, to those shoots and like helping out uh, and just like meeting a lot of people like, you know, it, it definitely everybody goes, oh, I want to get in on that. We do screenings like we did for Comic Book Men in season seven. There's an episode called Ode to Clerks where we show Kevin the first cut of like shooting Clerks on his birthday. And there for the first time, like Jason Mewes came out to watch it. You know, Brian Johnson came out to watch it. Uh, his cousin Johnny, Johnny William came out. Uh, you know, and we got to show it to a lot more people. And every time we'd show it to more people that are portrayed in the movie, because it is a biopic. So you have like the younger actors playing, you know, the real life characters. And since most of the real life characters are still alive, they all pop in as new characters to help tell the story in a drama, comedy, biography, film type, like aviator, disaster artist, et cetera. And so it's like you... Every time we went out to screen stuff, somebody would be like, yeah, okay, so how do I get in on that? And so it was kind of like trying to work with schedules and make those things happen. And by the end, you know, we ended up getting Lloyd Kaufman is a huge Kevin Smith fan. And obviously Kevin being inspired by Lloyd Kaufman, someone who was making, you know, New Jersey superhero movies back in the, you know, back in the day. It's like, Absolutely. it was, it's such a cool little ripple effect type of thing that pays homage to the things before and to, to come. And, uh, you know, now we've got like, you know, it's the things jam packed. If you're Kevin Smith fan, you, you, you love all those films. There's something for everybody in the, the film. And I definitely think it's going to be 
you know, something that uh, everybody's excited about. And I mean, when we did our tests and stuff with our rough cuts, we were able to still win like six awards at five film festivals. And most of them were Indie Spirit Awards, uh, Best Picture, Audience Awards. And so um, we're definitely like excited to be able to finally take it on tour, you know, very much like Kevin likes to do. And um, yeah, we're super excited. And we just, uh, we literally just announced a couple days ago, we're going to do premiere at Kevin Smith's Smodcast Cinemas which is actually his childhood theater that he used to watch movies at growing up with his dad. And uh, yeah, I mean, started out doing like, you know, uh, producing and uh, editing and acting in it and a little bit of everything. Like if you look, you know, there's, there's definitely something my, my hands have, have been involved in with it. And, you know, it's definitely, it's one of those movies that like, if I just made this, you know, cause obviously like I love a lot of the stuff I'm working on now, especially like, Cannibal Comedian coming out has so much of our like blood, sweat and tears put into it. And a lot of like personal artistry uh, woven into a cannibal stand up comedy story. Uh, but like shooting clerks is definitely one of those. Like if I only ended up making one movie and like keeling over and, you know, people were able to see that and see that, like there was something that had an impression on me that I wanted to go out and help tell that story to other filmmakers to inspire them kind of like I was as a kid you know, I think that would be worth it if it was like just that one thing. So like, I can't be more excited that, especially with like it being the 30th anniversary now this year of the filming of the original Clerks in 93, um, for that to kind of come out and celebrate and, you know, for the fans and, and Kevin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what awesome, a dude. fucking life. Like, <laughs> the, dude, this is... <laughs> that was wild. This is cool, dude. Well, that's awesome. Just like, oh, well, sorry for anybody like waiting for like an ad break, you know, because uh, uh, to like or to pee, you know, unless you just like. Oh, no, that's and, that's good shit, dude, that. because Kevin's I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan, first of all. And it's cool for us because, like, I mean, Kevin Smith was one of the original podcasters, really. Oh, for sure. If yeah. You think about it. So like podcast. Yeah, absolutely. And then for him to I, obviously, you know, that's how he got his idea of taking everything on tour and making money that sure. way and, and, and not going through like huge studio. Well, I, wanna, I mean, I want to know, I want to know a little bit about can, Cannibal Comedian. Like, is there anything you can tell me? Like, for sure. All? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. We're not too uh, secretive about it. I mean, uh, I, I unless it's like, you know, third act spoilers, we're pretty open to a lot of that stuff. I mean, it's 100 percent like you know, a love letter to like horror comedy. I mean, I, I first got onto that movie as an actor. I play uh, Bruce, who's a stand up comedian in the film. And Sean Heights is from. Sarasota, Florida, he did Big Top Evil with Bill Mosley, Jay LaRose, and and he's one of the, the leads in that film as well. You can go check that movie out on like, you know, a Tubi and streaming right now, Amazon and uh, uh, Paramount Plus and uh, MGM Plus, I believe it's on there too. And um, and I had worked with Bill Mosley on a film called The Art of Villainy uh, back when I was at UCF Film School. And uh, so we kind of bonded over that. We bonded over Terrifier. I, I can't even remember if this, I think this was after Terrifier 2. So like we were kind of chit-chatting a little bit about just like excitement for like Terrifier 2 coming out. And uh, and then just like, just nerding out over like broke horror fan and Witter Entertainment, like re-releasing like, uh, you know, the, the clamshell VHSs of like new movies on vhs which are incredibly gorgeous same thing with like retro release video you know which retro release video put out uh, a big top evil for sean as well once we kind of like got got that love together and when we went and did that uh you know i just got to meet like uh, you know aaron prager austin judd robert dunn a lot of those cats who uh just like i saw just something really special in this film when we were doing it and then like pandemic hit like immediately right after uh, the kind of their principal wrapped. And uh, at that time, we, there was a lot of time to kind of sit down and marinate and let things go and and uh, just kind of figure out where the movie was and put an assembly together and kind of see that. And Sean and I had connected really well around that time. And so I was able to kind of look at stuff, but I have, I have such a, a heavy background in kind of like studio marketing and distribution. And it's like, I have heavily focused on like, posters and trailers and stuff like that and what i saw that was originally put together was very hardcore horror and i was like you have such a great comedy on your hands like you know and, and, and around this time too just like anybody else during the pandemic it was just kind of like what is my life what if what if, what are you it's kind of one of those like checkpoints of like you know if the world were to end tomorrow would i be okay with that or is there something i'd want to kind of do differently 
And uh, at that time, I was kind of like, man, I've always I've always wanted to do this. And I owe something to little baby Rai Rai. Uh, I need to I need to make sure I see this through. I owe that kid who dreamed of doing all these things, you know, because I used to write and direct and act and edit and produce and shoot all of those films and play the killer who's bumbling and tripping over banana peels and stuff like that. And I was like, man, something about horror comedy, I feel like still is something that studios and distributors are afraid to kind of jump in and have fun with because they never know if it's going to be a hit. I mean, eventually scary movie kind of ran its course, but you don't see a lot of horror comedies that do come out and the ones that kind of do don't really find a following for like 10 years. Let me, let me ask you about one horror comedy that I, I had no idea that was a horror comedy. And then when I watched it, I fell in love with it. And I still think it's one of the funniest movies. Did you ever watch student bodies? I haven't seen student bodies. Uh, it is definitely on my list because I've I've seen the artwork so much, but uh... that that is one I encourage. Like, there's certain parts of it that are I'm just like you're drawing this out like it's too fucking long, right? And, but there are <laughs> there is some funny fucking parts that it's really really worth watching. I yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give anything away, but I definitely encourage anyone to watch horror or, or student bodies if you like horror comedy. It's kind of great to uh, to rediscover a lot of these movies too that you'll see just pop up through like Vestron, you know, re-releases or stuff yes. on Shutter or yes. Streambox. You know, like the the Mutilator, uh, the Arrow put out that great set, and I you know had watched that before jumping on for Mutilator too, and like although that wasn't like my favorite movie of all time uh at least i play a, a, like a, a character who is his favorite movie of all time so i was able to kind of like tap into uh at least you know some of my real life love for horror and comedy and zany stuff and you know be able to jump in on that is that is that stream can we stream that now not yet uh, the trailer's out now for it. They don't have a release date yet for it, or at least I haven't heard. I know they're kind of like teasing some big news that they have coming up. Um, but uh, luckily, there's a little bit of like, you know, I'm one of the monkeys in the circus, but it's not my monkeys, not my circus kind of thing, which is nice uh, that I just get to like act in that film. Um, but uh, it's not out yet. And I wouldn't be surprised if Buddy Cooper ended up doing something similar to what he did with the original Mutilator, which is kind of do a little bit of like a limited release and kind of, you know, uh, see where it goes from there kind of thing. Because I, I, it's interesting with that cat being a dude who is so old school to what kind of a uh, um, str strategy, release strategy he would do with it, given now that everything's kind of evolved. But it's also especially with like Terrifier 2 coming out, like giving a little bit more credence to like horror movies and theatrical runs and stuff like that. And you're seeing like new movies pop up all the time and people taking chances with that. And it's just like, yeah. you know, and then everybody's striking with streaming stuff going on now because at the end of the day, the people that it's so convenient for viewers to watch it, but like for the people that do put all of their life into streaming things and they don't really see much of anything out of it because they're not like, obligated to have to give away those numbers accurately it, it's the same thing with distributors like at the end of the day distributor can be like you know people can be like i loved your movie i saw blah blah, blah. congratulations it's like yeah i haven't seen a, a, a penny for that in like three years or something like that because people will doctor up all sorts of like receipts of expenses for well it costs this much to market your movie and do this and blah 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 and uh i mean uh coke and uh, hookers and uh, vegas and blah, blah, you know it's just like they 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 could write up all whatever they want for spending money and never kind of paying you and but the audience never really gets to kind of see that so i can it's it's tough where you're going to give away your baby and maybe never see those rights back for another 10 to 15 years or something yeah. like that that like especially with buddy cooper it's like well my man's like paid for a lot of that stuff himself and uh which is great but at the end of the day like he's got to make sure that he's going to see a profit it's not like a lot of these first-time filmmakers where it's like trust me little kid give us your your firstborn you know and it's like <laughs> okay it's like yeah no it's this it's very different uh type of deal so i'd be interested to see what he he does with that even from just like a marketing and distribution um uh you know kind of avenue but um as far as cannibal comedian goes uh which we just premiered at the marina del rey film festival uh, last week, uh, we just showed it at the, the Cinemark down here in L.A. Got a really cool, like, local screening. Got to see it on the big screen, a big theater. And uh, one best horror film, which, 
uh, we couldn't be happier with that type of, uh, you know, launch. And uh, tomorrow we're literally going to be screening at the Days of the Dead uh, Film Festival in Indianapolis. And we're up for three awards. Uh, fingers crossed on that. Best Feature, Best Cali Film and uh, Bad Motherfucker Award, which uh, oh, yeah. I guess I'm, I'm assuming that's going to be for like their you know, like big bad type award, which Aaron Prager, I, I'm assuming would be up for, for playing Charlie, the cannibal comedian. And uh, how, how do, so for people watching, how, how do we stream by see this film? Like how, how do I, is it available now or will it be available? When will it be available? It will hundred percent be available. I'm going to say um, we were originally around kind of can film festival time when a lot of movies are getting sold. We were really like off to the, you know, I guess race against the clock, trying to get something done possibly. Like, let's just let's just throw it out there to some distributors that we know and kind of start talking about it. Um, and we do, you know, it's it's it is a horror comedy, which is, you know, sometimes a, 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 a like a you have to kind of bet on that type of movie. Like we could say we know horror comedies that we love, but distributors sometimes don't always immediately like, you know, and a lot of them like, like the movie. It's just really getting down to a deal that like, we can feel again, safe kind of like giving away our, our, our baby to someone and trusting them to do that. And at the time we also felt like we really wanted to do like film festivals again, because it's been years really since the pandemic right. kind of allowed us to do that. And I definitely like love and thrive in that atmosphere. And uh, for those who don't know, Cannibal Comedian is a film about a psychopathic cannibal who lives out in the desert with other cannibals and is fed up with his, you know, cannibal kind of just the, the normal normalcy of cannibal life, I guess, which may not be normal to us. But if you're a cannibal every day, I'm sure, you know, it's you normal to him. So, yeah. Uh, so he decides to pursue his dreams uh, as being an artist of uh, pursuing stand up comedy for a sense of, of new normalcy and uh, takes his cannibal life. Uh, and his his look and his bloody apron and all his body parts and all that stuff and brings the cannibal life on the stage as kind of like a Gallagher carrot top esque prop comedy <laughs> shit takes and, it on the, takes it on the road so to speak I like it yeah like and it. Uh, they're eating it up uh, in more hey! ways than one. and uh, but they don't know that it's like you know they think it's just prop comedy and this is a bit when it's right. this dude's real life and if you also look into like kind of the can or the cannibal the comedy world. There's an element of comedians kind of stealing other comedians, bit almost cannibalizing their acts. And uh, you have this comedy club owner who is uh, played by Robert Dunn, who has this just shitty little comedy club in the desert that's not really driving anything, doesn't really have an act to build on itself off of. And he kind of decides to try and, you know, a little bit kind of adopt a bit of that, you know, kind of give him a spotlight. But when he sees that it starts to become big, he starts to also kind of, uh, cannibalize a little bit something that's not his from a guy who really does live that life and uh, you know it's fun hijinks in, in Sue and you know I very much like to say it's kind of like a 90s Jim Carrey ask Ace Ventura meets the Texas Chainsaw Massacre um, it's, it's two everything great I want to see everything yeah. I want to see <laughs> two and, and, and of course we also have uh, Alan Danzinger who played uh, Jerry the uh, the van driver from the original Texas Chainsaw as well as Edwin Neal oh, wow. who played the wow. hitchhiker uh, involved with the film so you know we kind of have uh, the the the, the, Wait, love the hitchhiker letter. the hitchhiker in Texas Chainsaw yeah Oh wow! It's a good picture. It's a Absolutely. good one. It sounds great. Everybody, <laughs> Dude, listening, I, I, I know. Can't wait for this movie. Yeah, I know. I am fucking excited about that. Absolutely! Holy shit! Like, yeah. We're gonna promote this, the this shit is, out of that. Make sure you this, keep us updated on yeah when it's 100%. It, w whether it's streaming or physical media or whatever. Yeah, whatever we'll, have we'll, you. We'll post it on our page because we would uh, definitely yeah, like that. we we definitely like to have you back on when that comes out. Sure. We'd we'll love to bring two, you know, have Sean and Aaron and yeah. all those cats. I mean, because uh, the trailer's up now. If you want, just Google Cannibal Comedian. If you want to follow us on social media, you can just Facebook Cannibal Comedian, uh, Instagram at Cannibal underscore Comedian, Twitter Cannibal underscore Comic, uh, or Twitter Cannibal Comic. Uh, it's, just, it's just tough when you get the username stuff. But uh, for that one right now, we're definitely going to go and do the festival route because we do very much believe in the film being like kind of like a fun almost like midnight ass go out and have like a great time type like it's a movie that does need to be enjoyed with a crowd which like when you immediately kind of dump it onto vod and you know streaming you lose a little bit of that that 
community feel of like when you go to see a movie for the first time with a just crowd the, just and, the pure fun really yeah i mean just picture like watching the hangover for the first time i mean yeah, not gonna knock yeah. anybody who super picked it up bad. Late, but you remember when you saw super bad in theaters yeah. and you're oh, like, yeah. i don't think i'm allowed to watch this right absolutely. now like, absolutely but you're just like it, it, it you know the first time you see like i Iron Man or the Dark Knight and you go and you watch it with your friends and you just walk out of the theater and you're like that was that was a ride and there is something about that that like you don't want to lose and so we're going to do that for for a bit we're going to we're also going to be hitting up we haven't we haven't announced it yet but by the time I'm sure this comes out we're we're announcing a couple days uh Horror Hounds uh film festival we're going to do Indianapolis in August and um the Phantasm uh uh, we're going to do the uh, Horror Con in Florida uh, and show it at their film festival as well. So oh, uh, we're yeah, going to be man. doing it. We're going to be doing more dates. We're going to be submitting for more stuff. And, you know, we, we'd we love if you're if you're able to see that, just follow us online. You'll be able to see where it's going to be. We'd love for you guys to come out and meet us and, and have, have a fun time with that. And the same thing with, you know, shooting clerks. You can just, you know, watch trailer, Google us and follow on social media. And we're, we're posting all the dates and, and stuff for that. And, um, but yeah, I think, you know, obviously after that, We'd hope for we'd love for somebody to pick it up and do like a little bit more of like a limited theatrical kind of thing, which would be cool where it's it's not so film festival. You hopefully we can kind of make some money and whatnot. And then um and then obviously go to like VOD streaming, Blu-ray, DVD, limited, yeah, yeah. HS. So I'm glad you guys yeah. are still doing physical media too, because that's a just from a collector standpoint, you know, that you know, me and Taylor are that's a sure. You just see the see. Blu-ray section uh yeah. over here. Hell yeah, uh, man. VHS is like somewhere uh, over here. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, they're, 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 I do believe that I could, I could pinpoint a lot of what growing up, like I did before. And I mentioned like Jason mm-hmm. goes to hell, that, that DVD, um, you know, uh, the Kevin Smith collection, going to Blockbuster, picking those up and the special features, the commentaries. I mean, Clerk at, on Clerks X, there's a documentary um, called uh, The Snowball Effect. And it's the making of of Clerks, which very much is it's a lot of what we've dramatized in shooting Clerks, and it's one of my favorite documentaries of all time. And that is enough to just unlock something in your life that makes you go like, I want to go pursue this thing. I want to do something like they did. It's it's tangible. It just showed you right here from you know script to screen, from dream to it becoming a reality that that is possible in like ninety minutes. And so that's definitely something that we believe in. And, you know, I have endlessly, I have a documentary for shooting clerks that we're gearing up to put together called shooting, shooting clerks, uh, where we show you our trials and tribulations of trying to make a movie about the making of the movie, uh, cannibal comedian, same thing. You know, we've, we've got like, you know, uh, sit down interviews, discussions about horror and comedy and stuff, and really want everybody to be able to jump in, especially physical media peeps. But It's tough, man. You got to, you know, we, it's easy for us to say that like physical media is a thing of uh, where it is important. There's a lot of companies that believe in that, but there's not always distributors that believe in physical media. And when anybody's like, Hey, we want all the rights to your movie. We want the theatrical rights. We want the DVD rights. We want the blue rights and the streaming rights, but we're really just going to push the streaming rights and get some quick, quick dollars out of that. And then we have the rights to your physical media, but we're just we're never going to put anything out we don't believe in that and we don't think there's an audience for that like there's a lot of my good friends out there who have movies that they don't own the rights to their physical media and they can't put it out and nobody's ever done anything with it and it's not until maybe the thing picks up a cult following like look at mutilator like i'm pretty sure that there was never really like a dvd release before that blu-ray release so it's like it went from vhs to like you know uh 2k scan arrow video blu-ray which also was not the most widely accessible thing to buy you go on ebay and look for it. maybe maybe okay maybe it's just a slip cover maybe maybe it's a slip cover <laughs> version all right, right, seen, right. Well, i'll say this is you know this is probably a little extra a little cha-ching on that um but uh you know it, it is tough when there are these types of releases that come out and then someone will pick it up you know what i mean like uh you know uh, the, uh what is it screen factory and stuff like that will pick up like uh the leslie vernon uh right, right. behind the mask like and but that was sitting on an anchor bay out of print disc for years that i had to go find it a amoeba records when i went right, to visit right. la and was like oh my god one of these things out in the wild like you shouldn't have to be able to do that but there should i still think be these companies that like i don't i think there's another version of me out there in the multiverse that like 
he's he is a physical media or just a distribution thing of like just submit your movie for us to distribute yeah. it like right now like i if, to get a contact for a distributor i gotta like hit up a friend and be like do you have the email for this company this this distributor whatever like it's it's such a like oh yeah man i got you yeah what you looking for yeah bob yeah. at uh you know this yeah, so it's like, it's like a, yeah. yeah it's like underground dude it's it's, yeah. it's weird it's like punk rock of of, of movie making it's weird yeah. that like that's what kind of sucks about streaming is I, I i guess i didn't realize that you you'd figure that there would be something in the maybe in the contracts especially for like bigger writers and 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 directors that like they could say hey you have to put this out on physical yeah that's you know, that's an, that's you could do that so yeah. i got i got I, I, a little fun story i won't name any names but i will say a great story of just things like a you know you you, you learn from other people's mistakes and sometimes it's 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 i wish i would have known or if somebody would have just taught me these things or whatever uh, it would made save my a lot of time in my life, like having to learn those those lessons. Uh, so anytime somebody imparts that wisdom to me, I'm incredibly thankful, and I'm always happy to kind of impart that to other people. I mean, uh, I without a doubt, I'd say above and beyond, like Damien Leone has been like such a, a like a, a like a great mentor when it's come to like even just with Cannibal Comedian, we're dealing with shooting clerks, anything. I will like run it through Leone like every single time. Be like, hey, can you look at this contract? And hey, can you blah, 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 blah. And just, He's always like the coolest dude ever to give me like his real like, you know, his real take on on what what kind of deal it's going to be and whatnot. And and I, I I love the dude forever for that. And that's uh, I, I couldn't be more appreciative of it. But I do have a, another friend uh who i won't name because he, he gave me a great example but it wasn't so great for him where back when physical media was bumping and booming he had this deal of like he was going to make a dollar for every blu-ray that went out or something and this was like when they make like you know they easily be able to sell a million blu-rays of, of this in right. physical media when streaming wasn't as crazy and so he was like we're gonna we're gonna rake in all this money it's gonna it's gonna like this is a great deal and then nowhere in the contract did it say that they had to release it on Blu-ray. They only oh, released it on DVD. They, oh they sold God. a ton of DVDs and the dude never made a dollar off the DVDs because yeah. he was just thinking like, oh, I thought it was going to be this great thing of the blue. You know, it's like, sometimes you think, you know, they, 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 they set it up as though it's going to be this big cash cow great thing, but you got to, like I mean, the, be, the best thing, like if you're going to be a, a lawyer, if like, you're, I was just going to say, if you're going to be a filmmaker, you got to have a, like a consultant someone who's going to be a, a mediator or just the best thing is just like an entertainment attorney go through and look through all your stuff and just be able to come to an agreement there. Cause I have another friend who had a, a deal with a distributor and he's like, I had to go through and cross out about 28 points on their, uh, on their contract. And he's like, they were okay with 27 of them and they wouldn't budge on the 28. Wow. And, you know, but that just goes to show you that like, any anybody who's going to start out and send you a contract or something like that is probably going to try and get away with murder for the first thing and you kind of have to have somebody go and look through these things and sometimes John. it's a template one you know but sometimes it's not and especially with dealing with like first time filmmakers just make sure you take care of that and you get somebody else's advice and don't don't you hear this john i am taking it to <laughs> note man hey, he's got He's got one coming out. It's called Devils Are We. Have you heard you seen that? Heard about it? I, I saw I think on your uh, guys' Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's thinking yeah. about in, entering some festivals and shit, man. And, and honestly, it looks looks brilliant. Like I'm 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 proud of the guy. I really am. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Congrats. So like Thank this you. this uh this knowledge that you're bringing, you know. Yeah. That's why hey, I like to talk to people mostly. Th this is this that's what I was about to say. All this that we do is is literally it's not I guess it's helping, but it's, it's, it's giving us knowledge of like, Hey, well, we're, we're learning from every single aspect of every, you know, thing from everyone sure. that's done something, you know? So it, it helps to hear this. I, stuff. I think it's, I think it's also, there's a, from what we've kind of learned with our fan base or so-called fan base, I should say. Uh, Don't knock that, it. I've seen it. There's the followers are there. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's growing and it's, I'm it's, a fan. Don't be yeah. shitting on me, man. Hell yeah. All right. Well, give me a clap for that. <laughs> hey, Ryan James is a fan. <laughs> what I'm saying is like I, you know, there's you know, back to what you were saying, Ryan, with like uh, you know, com audio commentary and, and the behind the scenes stuff. Like I I think there's not enough like people talking about that all the time as well. Where like 
there's a lot of movie reviews and discussions about the movies themselves. And then there's not a lot of like deep diving into like the business aspect and, and the behind the scenes and the cool little stories that people aren't really talking about that much that a lot of people out there like to hear about. Sure. Um, so that's kind of what we've been, you know, gearing towards a little bit, you know, having these independent filmmakers on and actors and all this kind of stuff. And uh, um, from different pedigrees as well, you know, um, and a lot of people like to hear that kind of stuff. And uh, I think that's kind of what we're gearing towards because that that's what I love. It's not just like, like I like making films. I don't think I have any, like, I'm not trying to be a filmmaker really. I just like love doing it. It's sure. fun. It's like, it's something I like to do, but uh, for the people out there that maybe want to make movies or want to know a little bit more behind the yeah. scenes stuff, there's, there's not a lot out there. I think, besides the little interviews here and there where you might get a cool story um there's not really much out there that you can you can find for that kind of stuff and i i'm just being a big guy of like watching the the special features and you know stuff like that that the, the, there's other people out there that want to see it and so it's sure. kind of cool it's just cool to talk to people like you and 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 just anybody else on on different levels that kind of have those cool little stories and like you know i just know from this episode like the whole that whole hockey story of Kevin Smith is going to be like a cool little thing that people are going to are, are going to love, you know what I mean? So like I'm glad you yeah. went into detail about, you know, stuff like that and uh it's just it's just super interesting. Um and we are coming up on like an hour. There is one more thing I wanted to ask you about cuz I was interested in this. I think I talked about it maybe on our last episode that has, hasn't even released yet, but just involving like Terrifier and everything since we were talking about that a little bit. What do you think the state of um, horror is? I I feel like there's this trend of people in the industry that aren't necessarily directors and writers are making movies now. And like, you know, especially with Damien and stuff like that, where he's a special effects guy. And all of a sudden you're seeing this like practical effect thing come back because they're that's what they've grown up on. And it just seems like the 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 genre itself is trending in this direction of maybe like not necessarily being directors and writers, but just movie makers in general that are coming from different parts of the industry. Like, do you kind of see that trend a little bit? Um, that's a really interesting question. Um, I don't want to speak for Damien, but I'd say right. that he probably has always wanted to be a filmmaker. Uh, but he also has a love and a specialty for uh, like prosthetic effects. And that's kind of where like if you're especially you want to try and like make it, you want to like break into the industry or you just want to get a movie done, period. You have to be a little bit of a, a like a, a, you know, person of like many hats, you know, where uh, I'm coming into a lot of these movies being like producer, you know, the co-writer, co-editor, actor helping with props, helping with marketing, designing posters, like that's just based off of necessity um, until you get into like such a big realm and a big fishbowl where you can just focus on the one thing you want to do or whatever. But like, I could say like, you know, you give Damien your $20 million to make Terrifier 3. He's still going to want to be the writer, director, prosthetic effects guy. Like, because at the end of the day, you still love that no matter what level you're at. You know, but um, I would say that uh, especially when you're starting out, you know, it's you you try and do a little bit of, of everything that you can and find find your window, find your niche thing. Like I never wanted to be a producer. And I always said that, like, after the first one, like that was tough enough. I never want to produce again. But I've said that like six more times since then, uh, because, again, it's like once you're doing the thing that you're good at or that people see that necessity that they need that thing they'll never let you want to do what you want to do unless that is what you just want to do like like acting for me at the end of the day is the pie in the sky like why i moved out here thing it will never be anything more fun to me than acting now i want to write and direct my own movies i want to write and direct my own horror probably horror comedy type deal one day but I know that that's just with my responsibilities on the other movies is not within the cards. Now, 
after we finish these these next two movies, um, you know, I probably will mostly focus on that. But I mean, as far as like uh, with Terrifier and stuff like that, for people going out and making their own movies or at least making more prosthetic effects like heavy movies. I mean, I also just think that that's a level of uh, people being sick of the trends of everything being so VFX heavy, you know, um, because uh, I, I, I don't know why I've been thinking about this so much recently. I've never seen the, the Thing prequel. Uh, but like Ooh. I I just love I'm fascinated by the story that like they went and did the whole movie with prosthetic effects and then they went after and post and did everything like in CGI replaced it all with CGI but there's footage out there that exists of the original practical effects you can see it on documentaries and stuff I've heard but like I've never seen any of it. I just almost love like the little the the fantasy fairy tale lore about the behind the scenes making of type of deal. And you know, you hear some of the same things for like Jason Goes to Hell, all the stuff that they shot and never got to put in the the movie. Uh, you know that that that'll a lot of that'll probably wind up on this this new doc. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, um, I would say uh, you know, I would say everybody is you know, just doing as many things as they can. I mean, especially like, you know, Sean is, uh, you know, especially with these movies, you know, writer, director, producer pops in. He's doing a lot more acting now in a lot of these movies. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think when it's for, for, for me, I would always say I like create, I like world building. I love escapism first off. And that's kind of why I love film filmmaking in general is because, and, and acting too. I just, my life as me personally is like not the most fun thing ever. So like anytime I can jump into someone else's body and brain and, and, and play around on a different planet or whatever, it's like a little fun, like vacation. Like it is what, what the weekend out of a you know, normal steady nine to five Monday through Friday job would look like, like in my head, the, the idea of the weekend is 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 in like acting like that's what i look forward to and that's the break for me and then you know so i'll write these i'll be as a writer i love just crafting these worlds i know from writing what it looks like so i can already tell you i want to direct it um i had so much fun building it that i do want to play a little part in it and act in it and then at the end of the day i already pre-visualized at least how i can see it being edited so I'll go in and I'll edit it as well. And because I want it to be done right and I want to hire these departments and I probably have to pay for this or raise the money or whatever, I'm going to be producing on it. So like there's a little bit of element of just creation and world building that like I feel like you're going to get these multi-hyphenate powerhouses coming out of, um, you know, but it's it's tough, man. Editing is tough. Producing is tough. Uh, you know, like writing and directing and acting, they're tough as well. But like when you find the thing that you love doing and you absolutely have the most fun doing, it, you hear this phrase like you'll you'll never work a day in your life. Like it's just it becomes so fun that it's it's just a thing that you get paid to have fun and do. Um, and obviously, they're all elements of 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 work that that do take a lot of time and dedication and and effort and training and whatnot. Um, but uh yeah i mean it's it's it is just an aspect of i mean it's so cool when you can have people see like terrifier 2 and see that a movie was like crowdfunded and went and like exploded and kind of changed the stratosphere of a lot of things especially like let's just be honest theatrical distribution is like one of my like favorite things about that movie is that we're having these types of conversations that's like people went out and crowdfunded and made this movie and it blew up into this thing that was on the news and is becoming TikTok trend. And, and it's just like, it's, it's so fantastic. And if anything, it's cool. Cause like Kevin Smith inspired me to want to make movies, including like Leone, like Leone is a huge, like Kevin Smith fan. And we nerd out about that stuff all the time. So it's like now he is inspiring other filmmakers to go out and make horror movies and these like really awesome in your face you know prosthetic effect movies that are also just fun and entertaining like that's one of my favorite thing about especially like terrifier 2 is it is very much like a popcorn movie like you can really have fun with it it's i think it's like the most i think it's like the the least um you know like uh i get I, I think it's like his most accessible movie you know what i mean even being like the longest one i would say like 
it's kind of got this, I mean, I don't know if anybody likes or dislikes Zack Snyder, but just like, I feel like Zack Snyder's Justice League is one of his most uh, like accessible movies, even being the longest movie ever. Okay. Right, all yeah. right, right, right. But like, yeah. but that for Terrifier too, like I feel like, you know, you look at the runtime as just, you know, normal people just for some reason, two and a half hours or whatever. I've got right. literally jack shit to do. It's just like, <laughs> dude, just go to watch a movie. You're going to, you, you're going to watch a football game for six hours instead. Like, come on, just, yeah, it's tough when you, <laughs> you tell your friends, like, I got a movie playing a festival. So big world premiere. So excited. Worked 19 years on it. And then they're just like, yeah, how long is it? I, <laughs> I, I have to take a giant shit. And it's just like, <laughs> you, you know, it's like, uh, it's like, dude, I've known you like my whole life. You know, all I want to do is work on this, make this movie. It's just like you, you answer those those questions like that, you know, or it's it's, it's yeah. funny. But I don't know if that answered the question. I feel like I probably ADD. You, you, you definitely but... stumbled around it, but I think we got to that fucking point. You yeah, did, you did yeah. A great job. I was just interested yeah. because it seems like Terrifier is kind of becoming this, you know, art himself is becoming like this kind of juggernaut to to some horror fans. And yeah. it was just interesting to me that you haven't seen like a practical effects in a movie like that in a really long time. Sure. And it was like, it was fucking brutal, man. It yeah. was like, it, it brought back a lot of like memories of watching movies when I was a kid, maybe not even as bloody and gory, but like when I was a kid watching like child's play and like sure. the exorcist and being like, Oh wow, what I'm seeing on screen isn't like something I'm probably supposed to be watching. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Um, so it was just interesting to me that he's a special effects guy and like kind of veering off in this direction of like, hey, I'm like you said, taking over this entire world. I'm gonna do mm -hmm. all of it because and I didn't know if it was maybe because he specifically wanted to do those types of things in his movies and maybe a bigger production company or didn't want to do those types of things, or maybe he didn't have the opportunity to do those things. I wasn't really sure, but it is interesting yeah. to me that you kind of see this trend of maybe a little bit of, um, you know, different it people in the industry starting to make, not that it always has, I'm sure it's always happened. You know, it's just seeing something like terrifier was something or terrifier two anyway. Um, was just unique in that manner where I was like, okay, this is a guy I kind of caught on to it. I was like, Oh, he's doing stuff that like, like the stories there, the movies there. And then you have like this fucking blood and, and, and just amazing effects that you don't see in movies these days. Right. It's, it's CGI. It's that kind of stuff to, to, to get these uh, jump scares and all that kind of stuff. And you just don't see, right. especially a movie like terrifier Two, where like, you don't, Let's be honest, like, when was the last time you saw a movie like that in theaters, right? Like, maybe ha the first Rob Zombie Halloween? I, I right, You know, yeah. there's not a lot of those types of movies. Stuff that's like, it's got, like, this visceral aspect to it where yeah. it's so real that you're like, I like you said, I don't think I should be watching this. I feel like I, I tricked my grandma into renting something right. from the video store that I wasn't, yeah. I shouldn't have played. Is and changes, and again, but the, you have to look at it, too. It's like, people... You, you and you know who like you've had these conversations with they text you about terrifier 2 or whatever and they like they just found out about it like it was this new thing that was shot last year that that came out and is the, the hot new thing when damien has been making terrifier 2 for 10 years now like right. he is 2013 the all hollows eve like anthology came out that's not even counting when the original shorts were done you know of you know the, the the original terrifier short which i believe was at telluride and then all hallows eve and then the, the terrifier uh film which it, it i i don't know the whole backstory of the 2016 versus 18 if you like look to see when the movie was made whether it was like that was when the movie was made and that was when the movie was released type deal but like regardless it's like you have that then shot in terrifier 2 in 2019 and you have pandemic and then you have you know, it releasing 2022. And it's like, you know, that's, it's, it's another thing you see, like, Kevin Smith kind of also has been like a lot making a lot of like the clerks view askew movies. He's been, he's been crafting that story, fleshing it out. And there's so many different types of iterations where you could see it's just gotten so polished, but when it finally hits the zeitgeist, it's like, everyone acts like it's this 
brand new thing that just came out and it's the first one of its kind when it's like this dude has been training for the olympics for over right. 10 years and then wins a gold medal and it's like did you just hear about this lance armstrong guy or whatever you know it's like you know it, it's it is interesting when you see how that kind of comes about and uh you know someone hits a home run it's also because they've been training their whole life for yeah. that so i i Ab very much absolutely do, I, I think you know because i also have seen his uh listen to the commentaries if you want to check out like uh i i believe all halls he might have a commentary track on it terrifier definitely does with david um and uh you know like if you want to find out more about how this dude makes you know these these movies and how they came about i mean it's great like he's got he's got wonderful stories on the it definitely on the all Hallows eve commentary which is you know stuff about things going wrong on the set and trying to put things together and fix it and post and you know it's it's the trials and tribulations like to 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 make that success story it's a lot of like oh good job you know make, okay you can you can literally go and quit at any time and make a different type of movie and do double tripled and quadrupled down uh, cause he believed in it. And those were the movies that he wanted to make. And that's really at the end of the day, like what I saw as an indie horror filmmaker and, you know, what I definitely like, uh, was attracted to those movies about, cause you know, they're, they're not perfectly put together movies, but no indie movie is going to be that way. That's why it was done as an indie movie, you know? Right. So you look at it and you see that someone's, you know, blood, sweat and tears kind of went into it. And that's, you know, I very much think Sean's the same way where like you look at Mangrove Slasher 2, you look at Big Top Evil, you look at Cannibal Comedian. Uh, he's got a new short coming out, too. that's very much like that dark, twisted Disney deal. That's Thumper's Revenge, which has like a messed up Bambi story <laughs> to it uh, like that short uh, Area 5150 and his uh, next project. They're all kind of within that same horror comedy realm, using a lot of the same actors and, and set styles and pieces and you know, very funny type wacky movies. And he very much also has been like making and, and evolving and throwing, you know, just smarter choices with money and resources and connections and stuff. And, you know, that's what's cool is like our one of our very first conversations was about Terrifier. And I kid you not, I literally just got a text today from Sean Heights of, of him and Damian Leone together at Days of the Dead tonight. So it's like, there's like such a cool like full circle moment. I mean, I worked with Bill Mosley on Art of Villainy. He worked with him on a, on a Big Top Evil and Bill Mosley came out to our premiere of Cannibal Comedian. And obviously that dude is, you know, well lived in with the, the Texas Chainsaw lore and has a love for those cats that are in our film as well. And it's like you hit these moments, man. And like in 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 life where you're just like, huh, like it's it's wild how things kind of come about and you know, you just especially supporting indie artists and following their social media and plugging the things they have coming out and stuff like that, how it really does mean the world. And especially when it comes to like, you know, me and two other people trying to figure out how we're going to make this movie. Sometimes it's really just relying on like, hey, who who supports us? Who's interested? It's it's really comes back to that, like Rip Taylor thing of like just knocking on the door and be like, hey, if you ever need any help with anything, blah, 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 blah. By the time that like these filmmakers like you know, Leone or whatever, like have like these films come out and blow up. They don't really like they have the, the the resources at their disposal to hire like the best of the best now. But like when it comes to indie filmmakers and when they're starting out, when they're in the trenches trying to make these movies and build these fan bases and get a hit, like that's kind of when we're like, you know, we really do kind of need the help when it comes to there's no marketing team behind this. It's me on Photoshop designing this thing. It's 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 my designer Raph, Raphael like putting together these posters and like you know us building the hashtags and us doing the captions and us setting up the laurels and doing other things like you know it's really you know we don't have like a team of people going out and doing this. It really comes you know down to uh, you know everybody who's a fan of that stuff and appreciates that stuff and is if it resonates great you guys are our uh, the, the, whether it's make or break on success so it's like we hope you guys enjoy this stuff and and love it and you know get inspired by it or want to help with it or whatever you know it's that's independent well, filmmaking at the end of the day we we definitely want to support anything and uh as as as, as far as a uh, cannibal comedian goes we'll, we'll uh you know anything and everything that you have just send it to us let us know sure 
we'll post it if, if he wants to post it, you know, just to, I mean, the more, the more traction you get, doesn't matter which, which platform it's on or, you know, who's sharing or whatever. It's, it's more, more traction you're getting, you know, more people are seeing this. So any way that we can help, we'll do it. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll share the shit out of that stuff. Right on. Well, we, we, we appreciate it. I mean, you know, I, I've been following your guys' stuff for a while. You guys finally doing a podcast, I think is like, is, is great. Cause it's like, that's a no brainer. <laughs> and yeah. then I would literally see people pop on and I'm just like, Oh, I want to listen to that one. Oh, I want to check out that one. You know, so it's like, yeah. it's, it's, cool. it's, 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 it's cool. Cause again, like you said, like this is these types of conversations and stuff are kind of like, you know, um, it's not often that I'll get like asked, uh these questions that will kind of remind me as to like where where it all kind of started at and like you know kind of take stock of those things because i think i sean and i were talking the other day about like you needed uh we just saw a thing that was like you need to not think about whatever like picture that that time when everything's going to work out and it's going to be perfect and blah 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 and life is easy and it's the things where you're at right now is exactly where you need to be to get to whatever you think that thing is like the best of times are sometimes like right now when you're in the trenches and you need to like figure it out and get smart and like come up with like a genius idea and you know kind of be put if you're going through rough times or the pandemic kind of threw through you through for a loop or whatever um i look back on that time and i'm just like it was you know the best of times it was the worst of times but like it was definitely the times I needed to be in to make me realize like, oh man, like indie horror producing. Yeah. I think I, I've always wanted to make these kind of movies and, you know, I do act in a lot of these movies and that sometimes is the most fun day on set for me. But like at the end of the day, when I can watch the movie and I'm no longer looking at it as like an edit, rough edit, whatever it is, and this needs to be tweaked, whatever. And I finally go like, can I make some popcorn with this or is it a sound pass? Is that gonna is the crunching gonna mess that up? But like it, when I find myself finally enjoying it and I turn from the producer editor to the audience member, I know it's starting to work because I've yeah. now tricked myself into believing I'm not at work anymore. I'm actually I have the time to like watch a movie. Absolutely. All right. right. Hey, hey, we're up on an hour. Ron, if you want to hang out for a little bit after we can. Sure. Uh uh, we gotta we gotta hang it up or uh to be continued, man. To, yeah, definitely to be continued. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we want to come on and talk about Cannibal Comedian for sure. Absolutely, man. That'll yeah. be great. Definitely want to have you on for that. Uh, super excited for everything you're doing, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, very interested in everything you've said this podcast. Uh, this is a great one. Uh, anytime me and Taylor can just sit back and be a sponge and and yeah, uh, hear listen. the story, hear the stories. Um you know, just take notes and all that kind of stuff. We just, uh, we, we really, we really enjoy that. And, uh, you definitely delivered that today. So, uh, great episode, man. And, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Yep. Yeah. And if you guys, uh, if you guys want to follow for more stuff, uh, Ryan James on social, uh, uh, Instagram's probably my main spot where I post the most. So, uh, Ryan James MOV. If you guys want to follow along for more adventures, I hope to be able to do more of this stuff you guys are literally like the first podcast i've really done in like a very long time because i always tell people like when i have something to market you know fair enough i'll definitely <laughs> do it but i never stop working and then uh you, you guys know it took a little hot minute for us to get together and make it happen oh, so yeah i appreciate you guys being patient with it but you know Busy. again I, I was like premiere after the premiere weekend and then like you know we got D days of the dead we got horror hound coming up we got phantasm it's like we want people to be able to check this stuff out and really appreciate you guys having me on uh, to plug away. So there it is. Absolutely. Ryan, Ryan James, everybody. Ryan James, the man with two first names. <laughs> <laughs> it does rhyme. It's an easy way to introduce myself. So. <laughs> awesome, guys. All right. All right. Sounds good. Later. Thanks. Thank you.